All right, I'm proud and uh, excited to have Mr. Bimmy, pride of South Jamaica, and uh, a man whose earth, who, who the earth is his turf. Uh, Bimmy Anthony, thanks for hitting me up and coming on. My pleasure, Mr. Al Prophet, my pleasure. So, you know, you've done lots of interviews all different places, and but I think that, you know, depending on which things somebody watched, and of course your name is associated with Supreme Team, but I kind of want to start off by, you know, I think a lot of people don't know how successful and how big of a career you made in the music industry. And mm-hmm. just just kind of so, so for those who don't know, they know we're not just talking to someone who's about to talk about some negative stuff from the past. I mean, of course, we'll give them a little bit of that because that entertains them. But, you know, tell us about your career in the music industry, what, you know, you've worked with, what acts, exactly what role you played and when you got into it and et cetera. Well, I first started out with um, Run DMC. You know what what year mean? was this? It's in 86. So they were, they were kind of at their, their peak at this point. Yes. But you knew them before then, right? Yeah, I knew them from, you know, from like the playground, you know, it was a center called PAL, Forrest Lori, where they had, you know, you can play ba- basketball in the gym, you can box, you can swim, you can play golf, you know, different stuff, you know. Community recreation center. Yeah, athletic leagues and all that type of stuff. Okay. So, you know, Jam Master Jay should be in there, Run should be in there, you know, and we saw us be in the gym together, you know what I mean? We're, we're, are you their age or? No, I'm a little bit younger. Okay. Not yeah. much, though. Not much, not much. But, the whole community was there. It wasn't like, you know, an age bracket. Right. You know what I mean? It was. And that drew from what? Like Hollis? Ro- yeah, Hollis. How do you pronounce Rock- Rockdale? Rochdale? No, Rochdale. Rochdale. So that yeah, drew that from was- Rochdale? No, 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 no. No? Just Hollis, French Lewis, um, Linden, Farmers. It's like those, those areas. Don't what about me. Jamaica? Nah. Oh no. no, okay. So now that area where the where north that side. was at was that they more of they a they call it the north side. North side is that like a little nicer? Ain't none of that shit nice. Man. Oh, that's not nice either. Okay. Nah, none of that shit. But nice. there, but but a lot of that Queens area you know, what, is nice. What, what it is is it was houses. We had backyards. You know what I'm saying? So, so does Detroit, and that's about the worst place in the country. So yeah, just. I know, I know what you're saying. Just because people got houses and backyards don't make it nice. Don't mean shit. But, but just so people know, I mean, a lot of that Queens area, maybe not where you were at, was nice though, right? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of areas. You got, you got areas on the south side that's nice too. Okay. Because you know Queens County is the only large county in the United States where the average household income of the black population is higher than that of the white population. There's a tremendous... Not just middle class, but upper upper class black population in the general that whole big general Queens area. Yeah, because you got you got you got places that's like got like nice house, million dollar houses in Queens that are pretty much predominantly black yeah. neighborhoods. Just, just like Brooklyn, you got brownstones cost a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? So, so you mean all black people aren't poor, man? No, nah, you can't say that. They, they, no, it's they, a, I'm. I'm, I'm uh, a lot of, you know, for, for those that uh, haven't had much life experience, I'm just letting you know. So, okay, so you, 1986, what prompts you to work with Run DMC and what, what did their work entail? I, it was like, I always, I was always into music. But after me, after my basketball career, it didn't go through well, you know, it didn't go through well. So, you know, I got into the street life and then. You know, I was over to the music, over to the music. And then once I got hooked up with them, as I got older, I started going to the studio with them, Chunk King Studio. Ah. You know what I mean? Legendary studio. Yeah, oh, I'm, I remember from the liner notes being a kid, Chunk King. Yeah, I, I know. King. So me being on the That street. was in Queens or? No, that was in Manhattan. Okay. That was Manhattan. Were you, were, were you like giving them any creative input? Were you just no, there? Not, not, not at that time. I was just yeah. a roadie. Oh, roadie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was a roadie. And, and, you know, being with them and, you know, going through the, you know, because I, I didn't know the business. 
So I'm I'm in my learning stages. I'm you know artist, you know what I'm saying, and you know all that type of stuff. So, and Russell was around heavily, right? He was he wasn't around like that heavily. You oh, know? was who was managing them day to day? Was that Leo Cohen? Leo was that was later on. Leo started managing them, but well, Big D was managing them. Ah, okay. And what was what age were you in '86? But I was like what, seventeen. Oh, so this is pretty early. So yeah, now early. To, to connect it to, to what was going on in the street, just vaguely, this Supreme is locked up, but the Supreme team's still going on. Mm-hmm. And you're active in the streets at this time. Yes. I'm, I'm like, me and my man Just, we took over the team. Like, it was me and Just. At 17. So you're you're you have some good financial resources at this time. Yes. But you choose to be a roadie, and for those who don't know what a roadie is, that's kind of like doing the flunky work. Yeah, yeah, that. And you know, I'm on stage in the b boy stand. You know, what I'm saying there's a lot I'm, of cool pictures of you with them. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 on the road. I'm on tour. You know what I mean? But also, you know, I got lieutenants taking care of my business back at home. You know what I mean? So I'm on the road. I'm with them. I'm on. TV shows, I'm on war shows, I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff. You're with soaking it all in. You're learning yeah. the music business. Yes, yes. Did and, you um, move up to uh, uh, any other status with them, or did you stay a roadie and then move on to a bigger status as you work with other artists? No, I became an a and R. Ah, what year was that? At Def Jam in 97. Okay, so between 86 and, and 97, uh, what what were you doing in the music industry? Well, I was I was um, basically I was you know producing myself like at artists that I was working with. Oh oh oh! oh so you had kind of a uh, did you have your own record label? Yes, Three to Life. Ah okay okay. And, and what so year we, did you get in some trouble and had to go away? Ninety in like ninety one, ninety one. But 90. you only went away for a couple of years, right? Yeah, a couple of years, three years. Okay, I, I had three to life. Oh, okay, okay. So you started that when you got out. Yes, yeah, when I got out. And what was that? What was that experience? I mean, for 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 young people who now live in the internet age, where you can make a song and make a video on your uh, music video on your phone, right? But back, even when I was first, let's see. 1999, I put out my little album as Al Prophet Rapper, and then in the early 2000s, I was making videos. Kick, you got to kick me, at least kick me eight bars. If not... I got a whole music video I'm going to put up. Nah, you need eight bars right now, Al. I need for eight. I need eight. Oh, man, I got so many. Let me... I'll give it to you before we go. Let me... I got to <laughs> mentally remember. Come on, um, man, you rapper, man. He forced to come off your head. Well, you don't know watching. You don't know watching. You know That's the game. True. I might, damn, I might get Hove might be watching. I might get signed. Yeah, might get signed. Uh, well, rock, plus, I do do a little ghost writing for the artists I work with now. So. Oh, that's good. So okay, let's okay. So, um, what artists did you have? I mean, shit. I had um, one artist I had was named. Oh, the fa- I'm sorry to finish my thought. It was expensive trying to be in the music industry. Nowadays, yeah. you can make a song, put on sci-fi. Yeah. Back yeah. then, if the guys were paying me for videos, you know, you had to pay Ola to get on the radio. You had to, if you wanted to promote, you had to get in a car, van, drive around and touch the people. You had to print out posters. You had to print out vinyl. You had to try to get the DJ to spin the vinyl. It was a lot going on. You everything. You marketing, you you everything. You sales, you sales, you, you everything. You know what I mean? When you do it on your own, especially back then, because nobody believed in you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody believed in shit you was doing. Because rap wasn't, other than the big groups, you know, it wasn't like people were making any money. A solo, a solo act, you won't have a problem. You better be witty. You better have that shit with you. You know what I mean? That cadence, that that, that delivery, you better be, yo, you better have that shit with you. And you remember different. when Master P started dropping stuff? I feel like that changed the whole, in the sense of like, a lot of guys felt like, hey, I can do that. Yeah, independent. Cause P, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was just like with him. He brought someone to the game. He brought that street shit to the game. And smart, really and smart. He didn't give a fuck. If you didn't like my delivery, you didn't like. I, I'm just gonna say, ah, 
You know what I'm saying? Niggas know. You don't like it, don't buy it. Yep. Don't buy it. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's hustle. Like, when I used to go to Cali, I used to, on, on, the, on, on the seats, you know, on the, on the bus stop at and all that, you see Master oh. Peter Tank. Shit no limit. He shit everywhere. He had that shit everywhere. He learned marketing. Marketing works by oh, repetition. Marketing was crazy. Marketing was works crazy. by repetition. Yes. So did, did you have any success? Did you spend a lot of money? Like, what was what was it? What what went on with Three to Life Records? No, I, I spent a lot of money, and I, and I, you know, and I had artists, you know, that went to jail, fuck with the bitches, wasn't you know really taking it serious in the beginning. You know, you I believe had, I had in them more than they are. Yes, I, I'm one. Yeah, I had an artist, right? I'm gonna give you a story. You know, what I mean, a female artist. Her name was Punchline, right? And um, I was working with her, working with her. I got her deal, right? That was like my first deal, my first artist, my first deal. I got her deal, and Mariah like a Carey deal with a big, big real deal, real, yeah. Mariah Carey said to me, "Did did you ever act? Did she ever thank you for getting her the deal?" I said, "You know, I never, you know, thought of that. Thought of that, right? So, so um." Mariah said, if somebody give me a glass of water, I'm thanking them. You know what I'm saying? I, anything somebody do for me, I'm going to thank them. So you should ask her and see what she say. I go to her. I say, um, yo, let me ask you a question. Why you never thank me for the deal? And her, her exact words to me was, and I'll never forget this in my life. She said, why should I thank you? I'm the one with all the talent. And I was like, well, Mariah Carey helped you learn a good lesson. Wow, good lesson. But listen, let me tell you, let me tell you this, I'm going to fast forward a little bit for you, right? Now, years later, I'm at Def Jam, right? I got my office, my a and Some of my office on my desk. I'm listening, I got producers in there listening to Beats and all that, whatever. And Tina Davis called me in her office. Who's that? Tina Davis, she's the vice president of a and at that time. Oh, okay. Def Jam. She's Tina a big Davis. wig in Def Jam. Yeah, she's managing Chris Brown and all that. Uh, uh, Tina Davis. So, Tina called me in her office and said, Bim, come in, I want you to hear something. I right, cool. I go to her office and she got the music playing, but the person is sitting in the seat and that person in that seat was Punchline. Oh wow! Many years. So this is ten years later or something. And I looked. I looked at Tina. And I said, "I got LL on the phone. I can't talk right now." And I left out. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I had a I had a sign on my door at Def Jam, and it read, "Be careful for the toes you step on. It might be attached to the ass you're gonna kiss tomorrow." That's facts. You know what I mean? So I really thought of that. And I, when she did that to me, I was like, wow. That's why I don't get all bent out, you know, because you're going to pay the price one day. Especially if, yeah. if, if you're chosen, chosen one. Yeah, you know life, life, as I tell, try to tell the young people, like, it is a marathon, and you're going to see, oh, well, some people going to fall off the wayside, but, but the ones who don't, you're going to see them again. And I just try to make a good relationship with somebody right now, and who knows? And three days, three years, or 10 years, man, you might do something, or we might not. You know, unless like something yeah. big thing, and yeah. that's cool, too. And you just always but, show respect and try to have a good relationship with people. Well, see, 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 a lot of us, like, we get it confused, right? Like, if I want to know about some history, Right, I'm gonna do my research that was taxed to that for real, you know what I'm saying? And this is where we get confused at, and this is why we get all these untold stories and we don't get our facts right in certain things, you know what I'm saying? So, like you said, you know, later on in life, they're gonna say something to you 10 years from now, like, damn, I didn't mean that. It's too late. You should leave your home and knew who I was. You knew who I was coming. You knew, know who I am first before you speak. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I travel. If you don't know who somebody is, just be 
neutral and respectful. You know what I mean? Gotta humble yourself. You gotta be humble. Yeah. If I don't, if I don't like when me and you first met, or something was said, me and you talked about it. You honestly admitted that you didn't know. You really didn't know. You feel me? Because you got the information for a person that thought they knew. Yeah. And you thought they really could they connected some type of way to the pipeline. You thought that that was a factual. And when I talked to you, like one of the things you had said, you said, um, my sister was dating Bobby Brown when I was dating Bobby Brown's sister. You know what I'm saying? So when people Big tell, difference. yeah, when people say things and, you know, when people say things and, and they just talk because they want to get on the internet and they just want to, you know, be important and, and have something to say, when as a journalism, they fucking your, your career up because you as good as the news you get. Absolutely. You as good as the news you break. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you get some some news from somebody and that shit ain't real. I, I'm going to be known for just listening. Just listening. Gossip. With, yeah, spreading gossip. Yeah. yeah he's out. Oh, yeah. They go out again. He spread some gossip. He ain't got the vein. He ain't got the real one. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just up there listening what these motherfuckers talking about. Yeah, you know it's, yeah, and it's 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 hard, and you got to be willing to, you know, say, "Hey, I know this, but I don't know that," or tell yeah. you, tell me, you know. So, yeah. and yeah. you got to reach out to a lot of people, and um, yeah, it's it's a journey, and um, just got to try to do the best you can as you go. And one disturbing thing I've noticed trying to work with some people now, I think a lot of these young people, and it's probably always been like this, it's like they're behaving in a way that they saw someone in a movie or TV show act. So they think, oh, that's how a singer acts. Or that's how, like a lot of times, like I direct bigger scale things. I've done a movie and music videos and people afterwards will be like, oh yeah, I like how you run a set, you don't yell at anybody and all that. And I'm like, well, where, where did anyone get the idea that yelling at people on the set, like that's not what you're doing a job. Like, where do you get the idea that that's what you're supposed to do? You saw it on a movie about a crazy director? And they were like, damn, yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. Like, I don't, we, we don't yell at each other in a normal environment. And then we come from an environment where yelling at each other, you know, leads very yeah, rapidly to other things. Because yeah. hostility is going to meet hostility. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you can't be yelling. How are you going to get your point across if I'm yelling at you? I'm, me personally, I shut down. I'm yeah. in defense mode. I'm in defense yeah. mode. Yeah, you know or I mean? leave. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to leave. I'm going to defense mode and understand why you're yelling. You know what I'm saying? What are we going at with this? We ain't got to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah what's, what's, why is it personal? What's up with that? And then if somebody yeah. needs to be yelled at, do you really need to be working with them? Because if, 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 there's That's people the who like to be yelled at. And now that means you got a problem and I don't want to work with you anyway. Yeah, that's like a female like getting her ass whipped, right? Yeah, yeah. something like so that. Oh, he loved me. He whooped my ass last night. Yeah. You know what I mean? There were guys in jail that was like, I was like, do you like getting beat up? Like, is this some type yeah. of game? Why are you always just my business? You know yeah, what I'm saying? And, and it would be unfair fights, and everyone would be like, nah, you ain't got to fight him. Nah, nah, fuck that. And they'd just go get beat up, and it doesn't make anyone be like, oh, you're so honorable. Like, no, nah, you just like, yeah. you just went and got beat up. Yeah. So, okay, so it's, um, you have your record label and you're working with people, you're spending money. At what time, what, what point did you decide or did Russell call you or whatever happened? How did you move from having your own thing to just saying, hey, I'm gonna go be an executive at, at Def Jam? Um, what happened was I was working, I, matter of fact, I went, I went back to jail. Pro, um, pro, parole violation? Yeah, what I was, I was paying myself. You know what I mean? That's what we, you know, I was paying myself and um, my PO found out I was paying myself because I was on work release. Oh, so, to get on work release, you basically set up a company and made yourself the employer. No, 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 not, not, not that. My, my, my music was separate from the play. My man owned the cleaners in my projects, and he said I worked there. Oh, okay. Just so I could get out. But you would just give him some money and he'd pay you. I didn't give him shit. He, he just said I worked there. You, okay. you know what I mean? You give me a blank check and I'll write the check and I'll ah. get to you. So 
My PO and I'm gonna slick on me. My PO and my counselor, one went to my house and one went to the job. And you wasn't at either one. And they called me. And they said, they said, Anthony, where you at? I said, I'm at work. You said, no, you ain't because your counselor's there. I, I said, yeah, I'm at lunch now. I left. I was at work, but I left. You know, I'm lying. Like, I just did now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the PO said, he said, so where you at? He said, I, I was on my way home. I'm going to go home. He said, I'll, I'll sit and wait for you. But I wasn't going home. So he called me out there. So when I got back to work with the Queensboro, they had the red dot on my name. And the red dot means send them to the fourth floor. You're going back up state. So then um, my counselor called me in that morning and said, um, you know, you know, you need a job to leave here, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, I have a job. He said, so what's the job number? So I, so I called Corey Rooney. You know what I mean? Producer, make a producer. And I called Corey and I said, Corey, I need a job. You know what I mean? You know who Corey is, do you? You know who Corey is, Al? No. I know you don't. You're looking like Corey is the one responsible for Jennifer Lopez's career. Oh, wow. He was he an A&R No, he's a vice president at Sony. He's oh. Tom Matola's right-hand man. Ah, okay. You feel me? Big, big Tom Matola was one of the most powerful people in music at one time. Yes, yes. So Corey was his right hand. Corey's his, his eye to the streets, to the, to the world, on our side. You know what I mean? Like, he, he did a lot. So I called Corey, because he's one of my child friends for my project. He lived in Cena Manor. I was in Building 2. He lived in Cena Manor. So I called Corey. I said, yo, bro, I need a job. So he know me from the streets. So he was like, yo, what can I pay you? You know what I mean? I said, I don't need the money. I said, I just need to check, you know. My, you know, I said, talk to my counselor. You know what I mean? So Corey talked to my counselor. He let me out the next day. Hey, your, your, your um, connection's a little jumpy. Can you plug in the um, Ethernet cord into your laptop? Is it, is it cool now? Hold on. Let me move this. Well, no, no. It's the speed of your connection. You hear me now? Yeah, Excuse I can me. hear you, but your bandwidth is kind of low, so your resolution has gone down. Is it cool now? I moved it. No, no, it wouldn't come from that. It would come from if you could. Um, are you on the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Can you go to where the modem is and plug? There should be a cord you can plug directly in your computer. Yeah, but there's people in my house and it's, it's loud. They, okay, okay, okay. We'll just do it. We'll we'll do the best we can. Okay, so you go to Corey. So Corey, Corey, um, tell my counselor that you know I'm work for him. I got I got the job. You know. So I have to be at the studio every day. So me being, so me being at the studio, I said to myself, I'm also learn how to produce. You know what I mean? So I started learning stuff from Corey, how to produce, how to you know make records and all that stuff. So my first record was a, it was a, a remix of Kooji Rap. It's a shame. You know what I mean? So I did that. And I, you know, and I never turned back. You know what I'm saying? I started doing records with Corey. I just started making records. So Tommy found out. Tommy asked me, what can he do to give me a job? So you got, you got some placements as a producer on different, yeah. like, big yeah. records. Okay. Yes. So Tommy asked me, what can I, you know, he want to hire me. What, what can I, what do you want me to do? What you want to do? And all that. I just looked at him like, this is Tommy Matola. I don't know what to see this dude. You know what I mean? This is a big wig right here. You know what I mean? So... I just left it at that way. He said, well, I'll talk to you later. Let me know. Call me if you want, you know, whatever. So somehow Russell contacted me, and I spoke to Russell. And Russell said, yo, you want to go to Def Jam, work at Def Jam? You could, you know what I mean? I called Leor, you know. So he called Leor Cohen and said, bring Bim over there, you know what I mean? And, and I never turned back from there. It was, it was over from right there. Now, Lior, in some circles, has a bad reputation. In some circles, he has a good reputation. What was what's your what's your thoughts on working with him and him? Well, well, me personally, I don't have no, nothing bad to say about that man. That man gave me a shot too. You feel me? And I think you know, just because one person individual got a problem, 
that don't make it my problem. You know what I'm saying? They don't, it don't even make it real. I mean, maybe it, it is, and maybe it I, I'm not gonna say it's real. It's probably real for that person. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's not real for me. Yeah. Because he's been good. But I'm talking about when I first started at Def Jam. He bought me a Benz. He bought he bought me a car, five hundred. Like like I, I can't talk bad about that man. That man looked out for me. I went to jail while I was at jail. He bailed me out. He sent the niggas come get me out of Canada. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I don't have no ill or bad will feeling about that man, man. You know, when you want so, some money, give them. So you were at Def Jam when it was really, you know, the premier label. Like, what were some of the, some of all the, so people know how big it was and weren't around it. Like, what were some of the artists that, not necessarily you were working with, but just a Def Jam period? I mean, the, the whole cat, the whole roster was over there. I mean, like, you had Jay Z over there. You had Method Man, Red Man. You had um, DMX. You had um, LL was still there. LL there, um, Slick Rick. I oh, mean, and this everybody... one, LL and Slick Rick had put out some hit albums and had some big songs. Late, you know, like a second, a second uh, win yeah, in those, their career. Those, those are the ones I did. Oh, you did like what? Like the mama said, knock you out here. I, that wasn't late. That was before, that was the beginning of his career. Okay. What what did you do with LL? I, I, did, I did the Goat album. Oh shit! Okay. Go and, and and slick. I did the art of storytelling. Oh wow! Yeah. Now now as an A and R, when you say you did those albums, that means you're integral to the process of helping, not writing anything or anything like that, but just. Bring it producer. Sometimes, sometimes I, I I do right. I put words. Give them a I, couple I, bars. I, I, yeah. couple bars. I do I do right, but they do their thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and come do. up, help come up with ideas, and just create. Find a producer. And find a producer. Topics. You know all type of stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, that's cool. So A A and R is something that doesn't exist so much anymore. I mean, but, I guess they just want you to go find the next big thing, bring them in, and sign them away. That's, but A and R was artist development back in your day. But that, like, 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 today's is like rolling dice. You know what I mean? You gonna find one out of ten. You know, you rolling it. You gonna find something one day. You know what I mean? But when you ain't on a project, you grooming them like a horse, like a thoroughbred. It's what's behind them that's gonna make him go out there and fight harder. You know what I mean? Like Mike Tyson with custom model. You know what I'm saying? When that, when that, when that trainer left, Mike started diminishing. Yeah, it's on diminishing. So you gotta have that motherfucker behind you. That's that's gonna help. It's locked you, right? in with you mentally, spiritually, all that. That's right. That's right. And see what you don't see. And, you know? and, and what was your sister doing at this time? Like, how, when did she start to develop her music? She started. She started late, but she had artists. She had a female artist she was working with. Not that early in the game, but after my my, my career at Def Jam, she started really getting into her music stuff. When did you segue? When do you feel like you? I'm sure you probably still dabble in music, but when did you? Yeah, I do. I do. You ever feel like you kind of when they sold Def Jam? Is that when you kind of? No, 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 I was there when they sold it. Okay. I was. That's, that's when we really got busy. Okay. When did you feel like you kind of stepped back at least somewhat? Well, I stepped back when um when I found some executive getting jealous of me with the artist. You know what I'm saying? How all artists take to me. You know what I'm saying? And little mumbles and, you know, but they didn't want to say it in my face, but little things going on, you know what I'm saying? I had to, you know, step back. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm Violet Russell. That I would never bring no street shit to the, to, the, to the game or whatever. You know what I mean? He always told me, if, if I found out you were in the streets, I got to let you go. You know what I'm saying? So that man took a chance on me. You know what I mean? He took a chance. And I wasn't going to make him look no other way than, than good. Now, when, or when Murder, Inc. was um, growing up, or, uh, you know, was forming and starting to get hot, did you have any, sure, you would see them around, but did you have any more work relationship with them? Uh, None at all. None at all. Not at all. What None. about, um, what did you think about Ja Rule, just another artist? Did you say, hey, that guy's going to be bigger? Not, it ain't nothing to do with you, so you didn't think so It was that. like, when, like, I'm up there for myself. I'm up there trying to break my artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had artists who signed Tiki Diamonds, 
Ronaldo Blaine, I had artists up there signing the mines, who I signed. So I wasn't into nobody else's thing. I, I got I to gotta get my niggas off. What What do you think? So I'm sure your guys, you know, must have been talented. You picked them, Def Jam signed them. What, what separates, you know, what caused, say, a Ja Rule to get big or a 50 Cent versus – some of the guys you had who may, if if we right now listen to old songs from them and old songs 50 Cent and Ja Rule, you might think, okay, you know, I don't see the difference or those guys could have just been just as big. The difference, the difference is them guys have freedom to do it. I didn't have no freedom. So if I'm working with LL or Foxy or somebody like that, and I'm working with them, Def Jam ain't having me going to do my own artist, my own shit. Because I was really... Oh, you, know, you didn't have enough time to put into your people. I ain't had no time. They, I think they signed my people just to appease me. Sorry, let me turn on my AC here. Yeah. It's, it's 99 degrees out here in the desert already. Yeah. <laughs> so it, they, I think they signed my artists to appease me. So I continue working on their artists. And they didn't give you enough time and resources to develop them. Well, you need time to work with my artists where I did them guys a disservice. So is that, is that, did, did that frustration lead? Is that when you kind of started to step back? Nah, it, well, some of it, right? But what, what made me step back was when, when one of the execs had told another artist, Dub C, that she don't want him to work with me. He oh, yeah, shit, that damn had everybody. You had Dub, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. so they didn't want him to work with me, you know what I'm saying? And Dub told me. So I went back, and I had a conversation. And the conversation went like, you ain't going to have him the way you got everybody else on the label. So I'm like, wow, I don't need to be here. You know what I'm saying? What did you go do then? I just chilled out, man, living off my money, man. I was just not even coming to office and none of that. So Kevin Lyles called me and told me to work from home. So when I know when he told me to work from home, I know what that meant. That's step one to get ready. Yeah. Dude, step one, yo, go ahead, because he's a head case. So now to this day, though, you get you get some royalty checks, right? No, because I'm going to tell you another trick that I got put on, right? I get a point off each album on dick. I was Zach's produced on every album, right? But what happened is, being that I work for Def Jam, I'm getting a check from them. My point becomes a deal of symptom point. They got to go a diamond for me to see anything. Oh, wow. Which, uh, you know, only, what, 100 albums in history or less than that yeah, have gone down. A million down. albums. You know what I'm saying? Ten million albums. Ten, yeah. ten, yeah, ten, ten platinum. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's you know they'll go put ten platinum years from now, but right now they're probably at three and four. You know what I mean? Something like that. You know. And so, how how much did you help your sister? I helped her a lot. You know what I mean? Advice. I helped her a lot. A lot. A lot of advice. She didn't listen to me. You know what I mean? I told her don't fuck with Todd Moskowitz. You know what I'm saying? I told her, don't fuck with that dude. She ain't listening to me. You know what I mean? But, you know, now she understand. A lot, lot of shady people in the record industry. A lot. A lot. And and there's a lot of shady people in the street, but at least in the street, you know, people know there's repercussions the way you, that a lot of... You can of, react. You can react to shit on the streets. But in a the lot of these people in the record industry or entertainment industry, period, they feel like, and really, for most of them, there really isn't going to be any repercussions. No, they're not. But you're going to go to their Beverly Hills office and do something? No. So It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then you be labeled the bad guy. Oh, he came up, paid did this. And now, now everybody's looking at you like. And they oh, just blatantly cheat you. Oh, yeah, no, I've had little deals where it's just like, you're just blatantly cheating me. Like. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's go. So now people know, you know, you're not just someone affiliated with these old street stories. You had a much longer career in the music industry than you did in the drug business. Yeah. So let's let's go back to, I want to talk about the interesting character, Pop Freeman. So mm -hmm. um, that's something I only know about from reading the very limited amount of things I could find. My understanding is this. 
Uh, mm -hmm. He was, as, as New York's black population was kind of not becoming not just centered in Harlem and lesser extent in Brooklyn, a lot of people moving to Queens. The, one of the mafia families kind of tapped him as their Queens representative and was feeding him mm -hmm. with drugs and numbers. I mean, is that, is that accurate generally? Nah, I don't think they're, they're feeding them drugs because, you know, back then, the mob ain't fuck with drugs. You know what I'm saying? Well, they were just backing them in with a bank and the numbers. Numbers, the numbers. He, he had the numbers. And did you work at a store of his when you were very young? He had a Super Red when I was young. What's that? That's a good, the Super Red. Oh, like a small supermarket. It was a supermarket. Okay. But the numbers was in the back. Hmm. That was a take. What for you? Yeah. I was 10. And what did you do? Just clean up or whatever? Not clean up. You know, go to store for him. You know, stupid. What was he like? You know, what was he like? Yeah. A don. A don. Respectful. You know, ain't talk loud. Never seen him argue. Ain't supposed to I argue. Think. That's right. I, I used to go to store sometimes when I wasn't there. Look, just look at him. Was he so, like a father figure kind of? Well, definitely. Definitely. What age was he at that time, roughly? Probably in his 60s. Okay. Probably and um, when, when did he live until? I really don't know because I, I grew to myself, you know, when I started selling drugs. But he, 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 he lived a couple more years after that. And when would this have been, late 70s? 70s? Nah, man. Late 80s. No, no, you weren't 10 years old in the late 80s. No, what I'm saying is... When, no, when, when did you work at the store? Oh, I was like 11, like 11, 12. What year, what year would that have been? I, I, don't recall, I don't recall a year. I was like 11 or 12, you know what Around I mean? Around 80, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. that's what I was in the 80s. 70, I wasn't outside. I don't know okay. but, but about... No, no, but you were like 10 and about 80 or so. Yeah, yeah, okay. something like that. So then, and he probably lived until the late 80s. Yeah, he lived to like his late 80s, yeah. Was, was I mean, you can answer this or not. I mean, what, what was there a connection between him and Fat Cat? Nah, he, he, he was connected to Ronnie Bump. Okay. Now, yeah, Ronnie Bump was convicted several times. Like, Ronnie Bump's got about 20 years, about three years ago. Um, no, he only got 17. Okay, well. That's my, niece, that's my niece's father. What is that? That's my niece's father. Oh, wow. Okay. So you, that's somebody you know well. Yeah. So Bumps was feeding Fat Cat at one point and yeah. supplying him way back then. Yeah. And did Fat Cat turn tell on him or no? No. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but Bumps was a big, big deal. I mean, he would, I mean, I call them the Queen of Nicky big Barnes. Deal. He was the big deal. Okay. He was like equivalent to like a Nicky Barnes, Frank Luke. I mean, he was big. Yeah. He, he was a big. He was the deal, and um, um. So so he was really kind of the the overlord of the streets of Queens. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's right. And he's, he's a well respected. He's a well respected man. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, he's still well respected. You know what I'm saying? Did um, what was him and Fat Cat's relationship like? The boss. I was too young. I was too young to know all that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, he, okay. Yeah. Did you yeah. interact much with Fat Cat or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What was he like personally? Funny. Funny. Funny and and and, and um strong. You know and what he mean? must have been and good at like, managing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had he had a he had a, a show. I mean he had no show. He had a store and memes watched his show on TV. And and it was, it was like life life and style. What was it was called life life and style or something about life and life style. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. Rich and famous. We used to watch that, and I used to be in the back of the store with him watching it. And it's about money, like you know. And me, was, I sit back there with him. I watch. Was this the store on One Fifty Second or whatever yeah, that, that was the, it, on Fifty Street? Okay, that was the uh, epicenter the center of what was going on. We had apartment upstairs. So okay. in the store building would have been the managers, you guys, and the stash maybe, and then out on the street stuff was going on. Yeah, yeah. People weren't coming in the store saying, give me two. Nah, hell no. 
I know, cause cause you know you got bosses in there. They you can't you don't want to get raided and all that craziness. No, yeah. that's what's going on in there. Yeah. And um, was there an overlap between what was was to your knowledge? You might not know this. Was Supreme getting stuff from Fat Cat or? Um, I really don't know at that time, but I know Cat and him was dealing a lot. You know what I mean? I really don't know. Did you interact much with Supreme before he went away, or on this on this one here? No, 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 no. The in the very, you know back in the mid eighties. Yeah, uh, he brought me out. Oh, okay, okay. He brought me outside. And I read some in a newspaper article, which ain't always true because it could information comes from the police that um, Fat Cat. I'm sorry, Supreme worked as a at a stash house for bumps, or it wasn't a stash house for bump. Like guarded some bump stash house at some point in the early eighties, or no, 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 no. Because you got to remember this: that's the north side, bump from the north side, pre from the south side. Okay. You know what I mean? So he went not go over there and 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 guard his. You know, bump got his own, his crew. own, yeah, yeah system he or whatever. Yeah. He got his own. Was, was there animosity between the north and the south side? At one point, it was. And you're from the north side. I'm from both sides. Okay. Because what happened was, I, I was born on the south side. I lived there for a few years. My father got a house on the north side. So when I got to the south side, I mean the north side, I stayed there until about 15, 16, then I moved back to the south side. And for people that's never been in New York, New York is so gigantic that even, so we're talking about, you know, people hear about Queens, I mean, Queens as the borough would be like the fourth biggest city in the United States. So mm -hmm. even a neighborhood within Queens, like, you know, this area we're talking about. City. That's city. like a, a city within the city itself. Yeah, yeah, it's big. It's big. So that was like the 113th precinct and another precinct, right? 103rd. 103rd and the 113th. 113th is for the, for the, um, for shit. Both sides. It depends on what side you're going on. One third is from the other side, hillside, and you know all that. You know what I'm saying? Jamaica. So one thirteen covered most of the bad, the 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 badder areas. Yeah. So the one third, they both, all that they covered, both of them covered fucked up shit. Okay. Both of them. And um, let's see what other. I mean, the street stuff is so rehashed and warmed over. I mean, that's already been talked about. I'm just trying to well, touch is, on some un previously, you know, just Queen's history, unknown street stuff. Street, street, you know, it was regular, just regular street shit that, you know, you know, when you say rehashed, is is a truth to it. Yeah. I mean, but some is stuff that, that there's common, quote unquote, common knowledge that isn't true that you want to clear up. Yeah. For me? Yeah, I mean, is there anything that the general public has heard a bunch of times that isn't true? Shit, we've been going all night, man. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of shit, man. Did you, you know ever what? see 50 Cent uh, as a kid? Yeah. Was he? He was in his, kid. He was in his teens. Did he when strike you as anything out of the ordinary? or? Nah, he, you know, he, he was no sucker. That's all I know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do know he, he wasn't a sucker. So, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, we, you know, we all can paint pictures of each other, everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I'm always giving to you raw. I'm always tell you what's real. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to – I don't have nothing to gain or, or, or lose. You know what I'm saying? By, by telling you what's when, real. When Supreme got out and he was uh, – aligned himself with, with, with Murder, Inc. and was running around with him, did you – Think, did you think to yourself, like, wow, that's going to make him hot? Or did you not think about it? Or were you talking to Supreme at that time? Or? No, me and him talked at that time. But I always told him, like, be careful. You know what I mean? Because, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you tell him, you know, I don't, like, like you said, we keep going over, it's over. But, you know, you got to deal with your, your kind, bro. With the same mental as you. Because if you ain't got the same mental and it ain't your kind, they ain't your help, 
then different shit gonna happen, brother. When it happens, you can't blame nobody. You gotta blame yourself. Cause you know they wasn't built like you. They wasn't nothing, nothing was like you. What what was your impression of, of Irv Gaddy? I didn't have an impression of him. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have see one thing about Americans, things make you. You know what I'm saying? Things stuff what you had makes you. I grew up with nothing that didn't make me. You feel me? I created my life. You know what I mean? I did things. You know what I mean? I would risk my life. You know what I mean? Not proud of it, but that's reality. You know, when people say it's reality. When people say certain things to me, I'm like, you can't put me in that room with certain people because you know what I mean? I, I grew up different. You know what I mean? So you, you probably spent more time with Prince than Supreme or not? Me and Prince lived together. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Me and him lived together. Uh, you know, I read, you know, I've studied so many different cases and groups in different cities, and I, I now know how to read newspaper articles and kind of know, like, okay, that's probably a quote fed from the police, and that don't sound believable. And, you know, like I'm doing some stuff with a guy here in Detroit now, Kurt McGirt, who was went away to prison at 17. He was called Detroit's public enemy number one. He was supposedly the, the biggest hit man in Detroit as a child, right? And it's like, I don't know what the guy did or didn't do, but to call a 16 or 17 year old, you know, the most dangerous person in a city like Detroit is pretty ridiculous. And I kind of from reading through all the stuff with Prince, you know, I don't know what he did or didn't do, but it seemed like they tried to, or they did lay, you know, all the violence in South Queens, Southeast Queens at his feet for a few years. I mean, what, you know, what did that make you feel like? Or what, you know, what, what's your take on that? I got to look over my shoulders. You know what I mean? I look over my shoulders. If he, if they taking him to be that, like I had Prince one year, I said, Prince, they put me in the papers. I said, what that mean? Prince said, they coming to get you then. I remember they put him in the papers. Did the same thing to him. Absolutely. And they put, and they put me in the papers. I called you, get a good, you want your nickname or your face hits that daily news. You know, then they can, when they arrest you, they can say, oh, see, we're doing something about drugs or we're doing something about gangs or this or that. When in reality, the people that they take might not be even the top of the food chain. Sometimes they're not anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what goes on today in the media. You got guys speaking on stuff that they didn't even on the bottom of the food chain. They wasn't on the chain. They weren't even on the chain. Yeah. They weren't even on the chain. You know, like in like Prince, for example, there was that they used that um, thing against him. They had the one trial where the witness got killed and the prosecutor said a P was carved in his chest and that's that. Well, I found some newspaper articles like 10 years after that where they actually arrested the guy who really did it. And he was like a, the girl's boyfriend. And he just yeah. broke into her. And it just happened to correspond with her testimony, but it didn't have anything to do with it. There was no pee see, curved see, in anyone's chest. Back then, see, see, see how what they was doing back then in some cases, they're throwing you. They you do it now, mean? yeah. It, it, it's, it's called clearing game. the books. Homicide, they like to clear the books. They do it with serial killers. Okay, you get these, these 10, sign off for these other 10, and then we can say that they're solved. Look at the Central Park Five. Yeah. It took 15 or whatever, 12 years, and then, oh, well, no, here we got the guy who, who really did it. I mean. I got a brother that did 29 years. 29 years, he just came home. Four years ago, he just came home he, for a body he didn't do. Wow. Yeah. And even if you don't, for, for the general public, if you're looking at, you know, guys like you, street, whatever, and you, they say, well, fuck them anyways, okay, but that means the real killer's still running around. That Matias Reyes, you know, so you didn't take the rapist off the street, and he went on to do other things. Yeah. So yeah. when you frame framing somebody or you're just putting cases on somebody, you know, it doesn't benefit the general public either. I remember I was in Arizona in that tent city, and I was a trustee and I was moving around some in the cell for an hour and they got this young 
Hispanic guy die from the from the pen. He's down on a writ for some more cases. And I'm yeah, I'm like, oh, how much time are you doing? He's like, yeah, I'm doing 45 years. I said, what you doing down here? Oh, I'm about to sign off on some more drive bys. I said, did you do them? He said, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm gonna just sign off so I can get back to the pen. It's so uncomfortable in the county. He said, yeah, I yeah, don't that know. but he Yo, was signing happens. up for him. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, it's sad. They call, it, they call sad. it in New York bullpen therapy. They left me in a bullpen 20 days once. Yeah. I was getting commissary yeah, in the bullpen. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got going on in your life now in terms of business and music entertainment or you're the magazine? Like what's what's going on with Bimmy now? I had closed my magazine because you know me glad time for it. But I'm doing my music now. I got, you know, two artists that I'm working on now. And I got Are you in New York? You're in New York now. You're in New, New, New York Jersey. area. I mean you're yeah. in that area. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna so, be out there. I was traveling the country. Uh, we had went to Chicago, Detroit, and then we were about to hit New York, Philly, Baltimore, and all this stuff set up, and this happened. But I'll be out there, you know, soon. So uh, I like to meet with your artists and get some interviews, do some music videos, all that stuff. I got my American Dope brand, which really is just me partnering with people already doing stuff, and you know, just just collaborating. And they, I, I see, you, I see the video, you all. Uh, you ran up on this girl, you over the car door. You remember that? I think he was in Vegas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was my friend. Yeah. We got LA over in, in, in Vegas, so I had my friend pull up on us, you know. I keep a few friends around yeah. the country. So, but, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm gonna see you out there soon and uh, let's do some, let's do some music stuff together. It's exciting now with the streaming where, you know, you can just be in your little studio with you guys and they make some music and you make some videos and use different platforms, mine and others, to promote it and uh get the money from TuneCore and you ain't gotta yeah. you ain't gotta deal with the Tad Moskowitzes of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well thanks for talking to me and then if you know, I'm sure some more stuff will cross your mind and let's let's talk again soon. No question. No question. All right, man, salute, Bimmy. Yes, Nice talking to you. Talk to you again soon, brother. Stay safe. All right. All right. Peace. Peace.